Ukrainian air assault forces are shown destroying a Russian tank and an infantry fighting vehicle, IFV, using first-person view FPV drones in a video posted on Wednesday, April 17th on the Air Assault Forces Command Telegram channel. According to the post, after aerial reconnaissance spotted the tank and an IFV crossing a field in an undisclosed location, Ukraine's 71st Separate Jaeger Brigade were tasked to engage the targets and precisely struck the two armored vehicles with its kamikaze drones. The video shows the IFV being hit first, followed by the tank. The tank is stopped in its tracks and suffered serious damage by the drone's explosion, a plume of smoke rising into the air. The IFV, while also smoking after being hit by the drone, continues forward for a few more seconds before stopping some distance from the tank and burning from the damage caused. The 71st Jaeger Brigade, whose name incorporates the German word for hunters, was formed shortly after Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine in February 2022 and has seen combat in various parts of Ukraine, including the Kharkiv, Donetsk, and Zaporizhia regions. Meanwhile, Russian losses in the war in Ukraine as of Thursday morning, April 18th, amount to 910 occupiers, with the total number of losses for the Russian army since the start of invasion standing at 456,960 military personnel. Additionally, the Ukrainian armed forces destroyed 31 Russian vehicles and 13 artillery systems, according to the Strategic Command of the Armed Forces of Ukraine. Meanwhile, in the Lyman sector, Ukraine's defense forces repelled three attacks near Nevsky, Luhansk region, and Terny, Donetsk region. In the Bakhmut sector, Ukrainian soldiers repelled 24 attacks outside Bilohorivka, Luhansk region, Vimka, Rozdolivka, Chasivyar, Novyi, and Klishchivka in the Donetsk region, where the enemy, with the support of aviation, tried to improve his tactical position. In the Avdiivka sector, Ukrainian defenders repelled 19 attacks outside Semenivka, Novobakhmutivka, Ocheratin, Novokalinove, Yasnobrodivka, Natailova, Pervomaisky, and Novukrainka in the Donetsk region. In the Novopavlivka sector, Ukraine's defense forces continued to hold off the enemy near Vodiana, Krasnohorivka, Pobieda, Novomikhailivka, and Urozhene in the Donetsk region, where the enemy, with the support of aviation, made 23 attempts to break through the defenses of Ukrainian troops. In the Orykiv sector, the occupiers, with the support of aircraft, attacked the positions of Ukrainian defenders five times near Staromyorska in the Donetsk region. In the Kherson sector, the enemy did not abandon his intention to dislodge Ukrainian units from the bridgeheads on the east, left bank of the Dnipro. In the past day, the enemy launched three unsuccessful attacks on the positions of Ukrainian troops. At the same time, Ukrainian soldiers continued to inflict losses on the occupation forces and their equipment, wearing down the enemy along the entire front line. Meanwhile, a Russian military vehicle whose unconventional adaptation has earned it the nickname of Turtle Tank features in a video purportedly going behind enemy lines in eastern Ukraine. However, in posting the clip on X, a journalist with German newspaper Bild, Julian Rupke, questioned how such a tank had managed to transport Russian troops unharmed while coping with Ukrainian artillery fire. Over the course of the war, Russian engineers have been spotted fitting crude metal structures on their tanks to offer better protection from anti-tank fire in a move also copied by Ukraine. Drone footage released on April 9th showed what was reportedly a T-72 tank with the additional armor moving through a field around the Donetsk town of Krasnohorivka. One social media user dubbed it a Ninja Turtle Tank, noting how the world's second greatest army is desperately seeking solutions. On Tuesday, Ropke shared a video which lasted more than two minutes of a tank scurrying across open ground near a settlement he said was in the same area. Russian turtle tank, yes, the type everyone laughed about, transporting Russian invasion forces to central western Krasnohorivka under intense Ukrainian artillery fire, unharmed, and returning to base, the journalist wrote to his 174,000 followers. One, not funny at all. Two, where are Ukrainian defenders? 
Rapke said, questioning in a follow-up post why the footage, which he said had been uploaded by a Ukrainian source, had the jaunty music of the theme tune to the 1970s TV series The Benny Hill Show. In another post, he posted a still image from the clip of the tank, writing, Direct 155mm DPCM, dual-purpose improved conventional munition, hit without visible effect. Russian military blogger Colonel Kassad had earlier posted the video on his Telegram channel, saying that Moscow's troops entered Krasnohorivka, ride around, and reach the factory building in the center, before calmly leaving. Meanwhile, Marjorie Taylor Greene has introduced an amendment to a foreign aid bill to require members of Congress who vote in favor of providing aid to Ukraine to join the country's military. The Republican Georgia Congresswoman proposed amendments to the long-negotiated foreign aid bills for Ukraine and Israel on Wednesday night, after House Speaker Mike Johnson told representatives that they would vote on three separate bills. A further bill is being put forward for the Indo-Pacific region, including military funding for Taiwan. Green, who has long argued against providing any further funding to Ukraine, introduced three amendments to the Ukraine Security Supplemental Appropriations Act. One of her amendments states that any member of Congress who votes in favor of this act shall be required to conscript in the Ukrainian military. Meanwhile, more Chinese banking giants have restricted transactions from Russia, dealing a blow to an already isolated Moscow. The world's third largest bank by market capitalization, the Industrial and Commercial Bank of China, ICBC, and three other top lenders have stopped accepting virtually all payments from Russia in order to dodge U.S. punishment for aiding that country over its war against Ukraine, according to Russian newspaper Izvestia. China has opposed sanctions on Russia since the beginning of the 2022 invasion and buoyed its northern neighbor's isolated economy via robust trade and investment. Yet Chinese banks have gotten increasingly risk-averse since U.S. President Joe Biden signed an executive order in December, imposing secondary sanctions on a wide range of industries deemed to be supporting Russia's military supply chain. Thank you.